Hey, what's up, guys? Unreal Player 5656 here, and I'm welcoming y'all back to another episode of Katawa Shoujo. Now, when we last left off, we were having some issues with Emmy. Uh, she had, I believe, she was limping. Uh, she was limping uh, on her uh, what left, right leg, I think it was. And uh, we're now over at the nurse's office, or outside of the nurse's office, where we're supposed to bring her in. Now. This is actually a uh, fun fact, my second time trying to record this because uh, guess what happened? OBS wanted to be a dick and didn't want to record. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to this shit. So, I'm still trying to figure, I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Emmy raises her hand, to, her hand to knock, hesitates, and turns to me smiling guiltily. Hey, can you do me a favor? Of course. Can you tell the nurse that I'll see him later? I just remembered that I've got some stuff to take care of before class, so I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely, and she fidgets under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. That leg of hers. Oh, well, whatever. I said I'd help, and so I will. But I'll make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day's out. Yeah, okay, I'll let him know. Emmy looks like I've just given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much! You're the best, Isao. I am rewarded for my complicity in her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it, or so I tell myself. As Emmy heads out of the building, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door of the office. Ah, Isao, come on in. I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she's ill. Ah, uh, she said that she'd forgotten to do something, and so she had to skip out, but she'll see you later today. The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. Honestly, that girl. Huh? She's been avoiding me. Yesterday she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics, and now this. Well, at least it's not just me Emmy doesn't want worrying. That's, a uh, comfort, I guess. Still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. I say I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that you mention it, she was limping pretty, pretty badly today. And last night as well. The nurse's eyes narrow at the words last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were, uh, on a date. The nurse, the nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. And with that, I am out of juice. Great. Water! His gaze turns thoughtful, and then he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course! I was planning on doing that anyway. I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Hmm, yes, she does that. Afraid I'll make her stop running. <clears throat> Will you? I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well... I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I, before I can make that call. I see. I mean, not allowed to run? Perish the thought! I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. No wonder she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget, he grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget that I know what medications you're on. You be, you be careful around Emmy, got it? Wow, you look serious, too. Yeah, got it. Don't hurt Emmy. Wouldn't dream of it. Grand. I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Late, as in the late Hisao Nakai. As in dead. Okay. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. Sounded better in my head. Well, at any rate. Get out of here before you miss your first class. You've got things to do, I'm sure. Shoot. As I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. I'd better head back to my room or I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? The lunch bell sounds, and I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning's classes. My lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run, has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Emmy and Rin are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? A raised eyebrow is my reward for speaking. Better than what? Er, uh, better than you felt yesterday. Rin gives my question some serious thought. 
I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep, because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this way, I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep my I can keep from being overtired. An eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night. Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. I see. No, I don't see at all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay, since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Like yesterday, do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but she but would she ask for help if she needed it? Rin frowns and I and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. No, you have to make her. Like, she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise, she would lose her legs again, and that's just too weird. Losing legs, losing things twice. Especially if you don't find if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same thing, are the, are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of loss, isn't it? I think so. Eh. I wonder. Wonder what? Emmy seems to have snuck up on Rin and me, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which is itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself up, uh, upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Your leg, how does it feel? This, that earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Emmy now narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe, a little, but that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Call me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy, uh, Emmy's frown fades a little more until eventually she's gritting, albeit a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you keep worrying, and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right, I'll keep bugging you about it, and that might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. How was your day, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. Hisao, I think I'm ready to go all the- Talk to the nurse, Emmy! See, it doesn't work out that well. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> Emmy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. Such vile calumnies from you woman from you young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me, you ass. So Rin, how's the art club these days? Rin, seemingly as surprised by the sudden change of topics as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it is okay. Although Nomiya keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He always struck me as slightly creepy. Rin ponders this statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. How often do you meet? Thinking of joining, Isao? What? Nah, I've already decided to join a club. Mm, really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club? 
No, I, uh, joined the science club, I think. Emmy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. Hey, Sal, that's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto? Really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? You're meeting with Muto. Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart your heart attack earlier in life, he saw. I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm, guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin, you too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing locations is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy or I bother asking what it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Emmy gives, a, gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, Rin in tow. I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates Shizune's latest rant. While we are pleased and a thrilled to see how well you've managed to make new friends and forge relationships, and with such a cutie too, Hee-chan. I think that last part was probably Misha. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden Really? That's disappointing, Shi-chan. By Section 8 of the Code of Conduct laid out in the Student Handbook. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be your excuse, as we are feeling lenient. And the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the already mountainous volume of work which confronts us, the sole members of the Student Council, and besides, you two are adorable together. Therefore, consider this form a warning, and pl and please refrain. Ah, fuck! I had it so good. Therefore, consider this a form of warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future. At least when Shizune can see you, Hee-chan. This whole spiel is so patently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions and will strive to contain my baser impulses, which I fear impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and will do my best to make your lives easier in this matter in the future. At least when Shizune's watching. This last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control of her laughter. <laughs> well said, Hee-chan. Chuckling a little myself, we enter the classroom. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Muto again. So, it looks like we've all assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did from the we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Muto smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are not are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. You really do have a knack for this, I think. A uh, logical pro logical thought process th processes that is. I guess so. A scientist speaks with authority, he saw. The answer here is yes, I do. When the world wants to know how it works, we tell it, even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain we must sound certain anyway because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile, his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. That's certain that's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works, if only because nobody can be sure. With no certainty, there are no there are no experts. But we like to pretend sometimes. There are some things we can be sure we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Muto picks up a pencil and drops it. 
See? Still there. But it's good to check every once in a while. That's why you'll still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check and check and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hisao. The whole time I've listened, uh, I've the whole time I've listened, feeling rather spellbound. Muto seems to really be passionate about this stuff. I think it's hard to tell sometimes how the world works, how human works, how the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we started discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that, in that than my heart condition. Before we realize, before we realize it, an hour's gone by. Give me one second. I actually gotta check something real quick. Okay, good. I have to make sure that OBS isn't being a complete douchebag on me right now. Oh, right. It's gonna stop doing shit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Okay. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have another meeting tomorrow, or, uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call it the day after. Uh, I've got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't ha- I don't really have anything to do tonight. Emmy and I didn't make plans, so... I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Man, this game just likes to mock me. I couldn't get Hanako, so now Hisao goes to the library. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn, the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to all to, for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care, I make my way to the main desk where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hisao. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Sure, what do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant steps toward uh, forward while feeling distinctly unnerved. She's actually really cute. I like the little pockmarks on her cheeks. Or the little, you know, freckles. Freckles, pockmarks, whatever you want to call them. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamatu uh, of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh! The walls have ears, Hisao! Or they might! But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah? Well, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Luko, Yuko leans in closer and, if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. Found one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I'd been looking for. All three. I'd suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I've just suggested she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm onto him. He might go to ground and evade capture. Uh-huh. So what do you need my help with then? Yuko casts another glance around the library and leans in closer. You've got to spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know? Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. What constitutes suspicious anyway? I mean, Kenji's a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wager he barely goes to class, much less sneaks into the library to pilfer books. I mean... Didn't that advanced cryptography book get stolen by him? Like, he went, didn't he go to the library for that, and then Yuko was asking for the same book? I don't know. Still, what's the harm in saying yes? At least it'll get me out of this weird conversation. 
Yeah, I can do that. No problem. <clears throat> Yuko straightens up and claps excitedly. Great! Now hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Uh, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... Emi Ibarazaki, right? Uh, uh, yeah. How'd you know? I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you were going to run with any with anyone, it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings. And, uh, we kind of started dating. Hugo claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great! I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought to myself when you walked into Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those with one of those girls. But really? Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and notice and nods affirm affirmatively. Yep, I could tell that you'd wind up with one of them, you know. I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Ah, I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's it's true. I met this guy once. We got we got along really great, but it turned out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird was that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. Huh, that does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't. I intend to try and calm her down further, but the both of us jump in surprise at the ring suddenly coming from my pocket. Yugo sighs to steady herself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Oh wow, I have a lot of time left. Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God I haven't called your phone before. Uh, oh, thank God I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up. And I can't. Whoa, there, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated, and it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... can you stop by? Like now? Or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I've apparently started saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. I press the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket. Apologize to Yuko for running off and run off. Perhaps at some point I would have stopped to think about the time or how suspicious it looks for a guy to enter the girl's dorm at this hour. Except right now I'm just concerned with getting to Emmy and finding out what's wrong and how I, and how I can help her. I knock on the door and I'm greeted with a subdued come in. Something is very wrong as I stare at the scene before me. Emmy's there, yes. But she's in a wheelchair, and her legs are missing. I glance around the room and see them sitting in a corner, looking like they've been thrown there. Emmy responds to my entrance with a lopsided grin that is both pleased to see me and completely, utterly heartbroken. Hi, Hisao. It looks like she's been crying, but if she was, she stopped now. I notice that I'm a little out of breath, having taken the stairs two at a time in order to get here. My heart doesn't seem to mind the strain, though. I file this happy fact away for later consideration. Like when I'm not staring somewhat dumbstruck at my girlfriend in a wheelchair. Realizing I've no I still not responded to her greeting, my brain lurches into gear. E Emmy? Wh what happened? I guess I shouldn't listen to you, Hisao. My legs got a nasty infection, and I'm not allowed to run on it for at least a couple of days. A week, sorry. She gives a bitter laugh that shouldn't be coming from her. <laughs> I can't even walk on it. I could have used a I, I I could have used a crutch and kept on and kept on and kept one of my legs, but I didn't see the point. Why hop? You can't run on one leg. At least this way I can still I don't know roll fast or something. It, yeah, that's good, right? My awkward attempt to look on the bright side seems appreciated but not really effective. Emmy shrugs again. It's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, we can't even eat up on the roof now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's the important thing. That lopsided grin again. It hurts to look at. I suppose so, yeah. But like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in... She thinks for a minute. Maybe seven years? Something like that, anyway. 
a long time. I'm afraid I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? Emmy nods. Oh, yeah, of course. It's not like I've lost them permanently. But it's a pain in the ass all the same. I nod sympathetically. There's not much else I can do after all. What am I going to say? I told you so? Although I did tell her to get that leg looked at. But by the time I noticed, it was too late anyway. Do you, need, do you need help with anything? Or, that is, can I help you with anything? Emmy shakes her head and there's a bit of her, and there's a bit of her usual grin back. Nah, I can manage fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling, there, of rolling over there myself. I blush in spite of myself. Emmy giggles. You're such a prude, Hisao. I'm not a prude! I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's ungentlemanly. I wheel Emmy's chair to her bed and easily scoop her... Uh, scoop her up and deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the, t on, s on the side. She's actually a little heavier than she looks. It would be rude of me to observe this aloud, of course. Man, you're kind of heavy. Ha! Get wrecked, smack. <laughs> Emmy hits me with a pillow. Ass? Just saying is all. Must be all that running. At the mention of, em of running, Emmy's grin falters slightly. Huh. <laughs> well, I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's what you that's what you do to lose weight, right? Cease physical activity? I'm pretty sure that's what the nurse would recommend. Speaking of which, are you still going to be showing up in the mornings? I'd hate to run a low Ah shit. Emmy's sudden interjection, more a disquieted muttering than anything too profane, uh blah, 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 causes me to look over in shock. She's leaning forward, trying to cover the fact that she's that she's crying by covering her eyes with her hand with a hand. Of course, the, subdu the subdued sobbing makes it pretty obvious that she's crying. Hey, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? I place a hand gingerly around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. How do you comfort someone who's just lost their legs again? Emmy wraps me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad at this whole comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. I pat her head reassuringly. That's spirit, right? You'll get through this fine, I know it. Besides, I'm here to help you, remember? Emmy lifts her head and stares at me with a tear stain with tear stained eyes. Can you? Can you really? She grins lopsidedly, and something sparkles in her gaze. I can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. Of course, I mean sure but you're a bit heavy, but oof. My witty comment is cut off by the sudden press of Emmy's lips on mine. I'm caught off. I'm caught off guard, and I'm rewarded by hitting uh, by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ow! Emmy pulls back, trying to look concerned rather than rather than like she's about to laugh. Are you okay? Sorry. I rub my head ruefully and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is that going to become a habit? Am I going to be lectured by Shizune and Misha more? At the mention of the duo, Emmy giggles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know why, I'd be utterly confused as to why she hangs around with someone so bossy. Which one are we talking about? You know exactly which one, he saw. Misha's hardly bossy. So what's the reason then? Huh? The reason why Misha hangs around Shizune. Emmy waves my question off with a smile. No idea. I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh yeah, I guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise, I'm liable to wind up with a concussion. I emphasize the point by rubbing at the back of my head. Emmy giggles madly. You could wear a helmet. Some kids here do, you know. Or I could just take revenge. I grab a pillow from beside me and whack Emmy over the head. Emmy topples off the bed and lands on the floor with a thump. Her arms promptly reappear on the bed and she manages to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising, a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face is turned downwards, downwards uh, and away from mine, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Emmy, you okay? You didn't hit your... Bleh! A hand shoots up and grabs my collar. She pulls me with a sharp tug, her face now barely an inch away from mine as she grins cheekily. Emmy? She gives me a sharp headbutt and our foreheads make quite a loud thud. Damn, what the fuck? <laughs> the damn! Yo, she's getting aggressive, what the fuck? 
I sit back and rub my now sore head as Emmy smirks victoriously. How's that for revenge? No fair! You can't take revenge for revenge! For someone missing most of her legs, Emmy is surprisingly agile. I swipe at her, but she deftly rolls out of the way and lands, and lands a hit with her pillow. Of course, the odds are against her. I can stand up, for starters. Oof! What's going on here? Guess I can, after all. Emmy seems to have effectively tripped me up, and is now sitting pr uh, primly uh, astride me as I lay on my back. I'm not even sure how she managed it. I win! Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've, I've been thoroughly defeated, and by a girl that's a fraction of my size at that. Then again, being defeated doesn't seem quite so bad, and me being positioned over my waist isn't something that I, or my body, can ignore easily. I open my lips to speak, but Emmy's head darts downward before I can get so much as a word out. I give no resistance as she presses her mouth to mine, not that I'd want to. Okay, awesome. Time's up. Okay, cool. Alright, so I'm actually going to stop right here, and it's actually perfect timing, too. Amazing timing, actually. Because I, I get the feeling this is probably going to turn into, like, a sex scene or something. Which, by the way, like, sex scenes I'm not going to read because they're, like, I don't know. I don't want to start, like, orgasming out loud or, like, sound like I'm orgasming out loud because, like, I, I have neighbors, you know? And then, like, I'm pretty sure that my mom would, like, walk in, like, while I'm, like, at the good part, so to speak. So there's that, too. Uh, so yeah, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like in the video. Be sure to subscribe for more weekly content. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Snapchat. All the links will be in the description down below, so be sure to check them out. Before I go, I will, in the description also, I'm going to leave a link to a poll that I made. It's about, it's about the future of Katawa Shoujo. Well, be, uh, more like, more like uh, my, the future for this series on my channel. I, I I don't know, I recently started debating with myself, yes I do talk to myself, I recently started debating on whether or not I wanted to continue Katawa Shoujo and record all of the, all of the endings that you could possibly get with uh, every single character, including Kenji who kills you once again. And I don't know, I've been debating about it, I'm not sure if I want to do it, then again there's another half of me that says, you know, hey, just do it. But, you know, I, I don't know. And I want to see I want to see and hear what you guys think of it. So in the description, I'm going to be leaving a link to a poll that I made. Right now, uh, last time I checked, it's actually about tied. So we need a tiebreaker, you know. I'm going to look at the poll again once I finish Emmy's story. And based off of what you guys say, that's what I'm going to do. You either get two options. One, I play all the I play all of the uh, I play all the different endings or two, I just finish with Emmy. So yeah, it's all up to you guys at this point. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching again, and I'll see y'all next time. Later.